once we're off. Hello everybody. Um, just a quick one because I've got to crack this off and get it um, uploaded before I have to drive all the way up to Newcastle um, this evening for something to do with work that I can't be bothered to do, but it means I can't do one tonight. So <clears throat> I'm going to do this one quickly um, and it is this particular one, Imperial, as very kindly donated by Mr X. Thank you very much sir or madam. Even though I've called him Mr. X, it's a bit of a giveaway to he. Um, so Imperial, very, very checkered history, um, has pretty much been shut longer than it's been open. Um, <clears throat> the distillery itself was, but kind of still is here. Um, and I'll get into that into, into a bit. It was founded by a guy called Thomas McKenzie in 1897. Um, and he already owned the Dalyuan distillery, which we've done previously, uh, and Talisker on the Isle of Skye. <clears throat> now, um, we, as you've, if you've followed my other space side ones, quite a few of them you'll know, around that time of the turn of the century was very volatile for the whiskey industry in Scotland and wasn't a great time to be opening distillery, even though lots of people were, because it was a bit of a whiskey boom that a couple of years later crashed quite heavily. And um, this was one of the early casualties. This actually lasted about 18 months um, before it closed towards the end of 1898 and um, it stayed shut until 1916 when it was bought by the um, Distillers Company Limited, DCL, um, who were one of the precursors to what became Diageo. Um, they resumed production in 1919, having bought the distillery a few years earlier. Um, it closed down again in 1925 and um, stayed shut until 1955 when it was eventually reopened. And it was a... <clears throat> um, Basically, kind of um, DCL had uh, there was a Scotch malt distillers that were sort of tied in, but kind of a separate conglomerate, and it's all a little bit complicated. And Eve, I can't be bothered to delve into it, so I, I can't. You know, I don't think it'll interest you people because it's it's just this this company, that company bought this, acquired this conglomerate with that, and uh, just ridiculous. So um, yeah, so it reopened in 1955 and was actually expanded in 1965. They, I think they doubled the amount of stills that was there. Um, <clears throat> and then in the mid 80s, um, there was another sort of collapse in the, in the whiskey industry in terms of the, the market just bottomed out. Um, so it shut again in 1985. And um, 1989, it was then acquired by Allied Distillers, who became Allied de Mech, which you may well have heard of, but this was Allied Distillers, the precursor to them. Um, so they uh, acquired the distillery, reopened it in 1989, and then in 1998, closed it again. So it's like on, off, on, off, mainly off. Um, Allied de Mech were purchased by Pernod Ricard, um, and Shivers Brothers were sort of like the whiskey arm of Pernod. Uh, they took over um, Allied Mech in 2005 and it remained closed. Um, they, they really had no intention of doing anything with it. Um, and they actually demolished um, the distillery in 2013. Now, when they took over, there were rumblings that they were going to either reopen Imperial or rebuild it or revitalize it or do something with it. They demolished it in 2013 to make way for a new distillery. And there is a new distillery. <clears throat> it's um, in exactly the same site. It opened in June of last year, June 2015. And it's called, Dal I think it's Dalmunuk, um, which is a, um, a a reference to um, sort of the area. So it's a bit like your Glen whatever's in terms of it's it's a, a Gaelic meaning for something to do with the area. Now, interestingly, a lot of the space items that we've done so far have been named after the geography, the geology of where they are. So it's the, the Valley of the Black Water or whatever. Um, Imperial was actually named because 1897 was Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee. And it was um, basically trying to kind of tie in with, um, you know, it's a very big year for royalty. We've got this new distillery opening. It's entirely possible that either Thomas Mackenzie himself or people involved in it were quite loyal to the royal family, hence naming the Imperial rather than anything based on where it was. So, um, so Imperial is no more, although technically it kind of is because it's now down Monarch, but because the distillery has been dem demolished, totally rebuilt, very, very fancy new um, distillery, very modern, um, and this will be a distillery predominantly for Shivers' blends. Um, so obviously very early days, we need to wait at least three years, although two now, because it's, it's been open a year until there's gonna be any down Monarch, um, uh bottlings available as a single malt if if they ever release them um, completely. So I think um, I think I read on Malt Madness that there was one official bottling of Imperial in existence from Allied. 
Um, but the vast majority of the stock went in towards blends. Um, it was sort of Dewars and, because um, there was a conglomerate of like Dewars and DCL when, 1915. So some of it went into Dewars, some of it went into Johnny Walker. It was it was another, it's a space cider. It's an almost a, not an industrial malt, but you know, vast percentage of the malt whiskey is made for blended whiskies. So this particular one is, um, is a Gordon McPhail bottling and it's 1979. Now I did, um, I was doing a bit of research in terms of trying out like what year it was bottled because with Gordon McPhail with the, the miniature bottlings in particular, they don't have the little label saying when it was bottled, just when it was distilled. So if you put Imperial 1979 into Google, the first thing that comes up is a um, whiskey exchange and there's a couple of different versions because there's a 1979 that was bottled in 2005 and a 1979 that was bottled in 2007. So it's already a case of, well, which bloody one is this? I think, I think this is the 2005 bottling, but I'm not 100% certain. Um, sorry, not 2005, what am I talking about? Um, uh, 1995, it was bottled, not 2005, ignore me. Um, so yeah, so 79 to 1995, as opposed to the 79 to 97. Now, the 95, they are currently out of stock. I'm just gonna try and open this at the same time. They're out of stock at the, the whiskey exchange, but the, 79 to 97 they are selling at one and a half grand a bottle so i don't think this is cheap however a couple of years ago what we're looking at three years ago now so uh, 2013 um there was a bottling of the 79 to 2005 that was sold on an auction site and it went for a grand total of 40 quid so difficult to know really difficult to say how much a this miniature is worth it's a pretty old miniature certainly um, but the fill level is looking, well, you can kind of see that, the fill level is looking pretty good, so I'm confident it's going to be tasting all right. Um, but in terms of sort of if you wanted this, how much you'd pay for a bottle, I have absolutely no idea. Now Imperial does seem to be quite a popular brand. It's also quite a popular brand name as well, because we have actually covered an Imperial before, but it was the um, American whiskey from, oh God, was it Hiram Walker and Barton brands, I think it was? and it was absolutely bloody awful. I mean, it was terrible. It's it's way down there with Fujikai in terms of the worst whiskies I've had during this challenge. Um, so there are other Imperials out there. I'm almost certain that there's an Indian whiskey called Imperial as well, but I've lost the lid. Where's the bloody lid gone? What oh, there it is, hiding behind it. Um, but Imperial, because it's a closed distillery, because it's one where it's been closed for a while, now it's demolished. It is one of these, it's not quite a cold whiskey. It's not quite something like a Dallas do, um, or I'm trying to think of the other one that everybody's after. Um, even like Japanese whiskey, like uh, Karuzara, because it's no longer people want it. Imperial's not quite at that intense cult status, but there are people that are very, very keen on Imperial. Um, there's a couple of Facebook groups out there that are just dedicated to Imperial, the distillery, to try and source them. Um, and there's not that many bottles out there as well. So Mr. X, thank you very, very much for this because I, you know, I clearly am very, very lucky to be able to try this. So, coloring now. In my office, as we're in now, I have a daylight bulb because I've got one tiny window straight in front of me and that's it because I got kicked out of my old office because that's now the nursery and that was full of sunlight and had wonderful views and now I'm looking out on a brick wall of my next door neighbour and no sunlight whatsoever. So I've got a daylight bulb so the lighting is slightly different to what I would normally have in my kitchen where I normally do it. I don't have anywhere to kind of give you an impression of where, like a blank background, but it's a pretty healthy colour and I'm willing to bet that Gordon McPhail haven't added any colouring to it. Now Gordon McPhail normally bottle at, it's either 43% or 46, and this is 40%, um, which might also give you an idea of when this was bottled. I think we're looking at at least 15 years, to be perfectly honest. Um, but it is a, it's a quite intense orangey golden colour. And it's the sort of colour where you go, hmm, okay, well, you know, there could well have been colour added to it because it looks like it is, but I don't think it has. I think it's just a very good colour, but it's very, very golden indeed. interesting on the nose it's slightly fresh but it's quite appley as well and there's a hint of white pepper but there's there's a definite sort of apple and pear that's slightly stewed slightly poached so it's a sweet sweeter apple almost I tell you what it's almost like um, um, 
like a red apple, which has a naturally sort of softer, sweeter. Um, there's a, a brand of apple that my wife really loves called Empire Apples, that are very, very hard to find. Tesco barely stock it, but whenever they come in, she gets them. They're as red as cricket balls, really, really shiny, probably wax to buggery, but they're really, really sweet apples to eat fresh, and it's got that apple sweetness. And there is pear in there, but there is also a, a very delicate white pepperiness to it, and, and a slight saltiness, and there is a tiny touch of oiliness to it as well. It's a very, very pleasant nose indeed. And it doesn't give me any indication that it's kind of turned as a miniature that's been sat there for a while. Um, so I'm fairly confident that this really is what it's supposed to taste like. That's a nice nose, I like that. Mmm, that is not too bad at all. Quite a sherry sweetness to it. I've no idea what casks they're matured in, but I would hazard a guess at sherry cask with this. It's a lovely soft fruitiness. The apple and the pear do continue through as well, but it becomes more of a caramelized apple and pear rather than the, the slightly fresher uh, ripe fruit that you'd be eating. Um, the white pepper's less so, but there is there is a slight, a slight hit to it, but very, very subtle indeed. Um, the saltiness is there, the oiliness is less so, but it's a very silky mouthfeel. It's a very, it, it's not massively complex, but it's very, very silky, very easy to drink. There's a lovely caramel richness to it as well. It's quite a sweet whiskey, it really is. But it's got that good balance of apple and pear in a tart tatin type you get a bit of a bit of bite and a bit of freshness and not not really sour but it it's it lifts the sweetness that's there very much a dessert whiskey this particular one very much kind of one to be drunk with um quite a sweet um a sweet pudding almost but i'm liking this but i tend to like sweeter whiskies a bit more anyway um, this might be a little bit too sugary sweet for some people. It's not quite liqueur-y, but it's getting that way. And I think for, for some drinkers who prefer it, either a little bit more heat, uh, I mean, there's no peat, there's no, there's no indication of smoke or anything like that, but if you're looking for something a little bit drier, um, a, a little bit more, arguably complexity as well, there's not a great, there's not a massive amount of flavors going on in this whiskey. What there is is really, really nice and very very well balanced there's just not a lot of flavors it eats pretty much caramel toffee uh, apple pear some stewed fruits but not a lot um, and it works really really well um, i just think for some people it might just be a little bit too sweet a little bit too desserty puddingy that sort of feel i like this a lot i think this is very very good indeed and i'm also very relieved that the bottle doesn't appear to have turned there is a slight oakiness coming through at the end now, but I actually think that's supposed to be there. And it does work really well because what it does is it just dries up the sweetness a little bit and, and just sort of knocks it back so it doesn't become too sickly. It just balances it very, very well indeed. I like that a lot. Would I pay 1500 quid a bottle for it if it was that? Probably not, but then I don't think I'd pay 1500 quid for a bottle of anything anyway. Um, but that is very, very pleasant indeed. Very nice. Mm. It'd be very interesting to see what happens with Dalmanuk. Um, whether they keep a particular style as Imperial did. I mean, whether this is a representation of Imperial's house style, I've absolutely no idea. If it is, it's an absolute corker, and I hope that Dalmanuk um, continue that theme. But who knows? They might Shivers might be wanting to go a completely different route to satisfy demand of one of their blends, and they need a different type of water skill together. But it certainly intrigues me. I know it's a completely different distillery, but it certainly intrigues me to kind of add Dalman up to the list of ones to look out for in the future. And if they've got any any um, sort of imitation of, of what Imper this particular Imperial is, I, w I think I'd be in there like a shot because that is very much up my street indeed. Right, that's me done. I need to do a quick edit and upload before I go. Um, can't be bothered, um, but I'll see you at the next one. Cheers.